Okay, so hello. I thought I would do um, another one today, another video today. Um, today's video is on health checking. I thought it would be a useful topic and it's something that um, a lot of people are unaware of that they can do or think that going to a vet will offer significantly more. And if there's something wrong with your apps, it will. But there's an awful lot you can do yourself at home and in some, some cases you can pick up things a lot earlier. Um, I will say on this video, um, it's going to be a little bit interesting because all the girls are out on free range so I may be interrupted. I'm hoping I'll have a steady supply of models um, but genuinely who knows, <laughs> they're a little bit um, hyper today. So um, health checking, right first off there are a couple of different types of health checking. There are what I term um, your kind of day to day MOT almost, very quick, very simple, very easy. Um, they're just aimed at using your instincts to get a feel for how the rats are and picking up on any kind of minor problems. Um, as I've got Monster here, oh no, don't lick my face, yeah, and Luna, but let's try with Monster. So Monster can be my model for a very quick health check. So this is something I do every time I pick the rats up. It's not something that I particularly um, think about a lot of the time. Sometimes I'll do it a little bit more formally. It's also the way I will health check rats when I'm judging uh, shows, for instance, because it's one of the kind of jobs of a rat, uh, sorry, a rat of a judge to do, um, to make sure that the rats in the show are healthy. So first things first, um, it may seem obvious, but stroke them over. You, you'd be surprised how much you pick up from just stroking a rat. So when you're stroking the rat, you're feeling for any lumps and bumps and ruffles in the coat. Um, it does also help if they're in good coat condition. So if I'm looking at Monster here, you can see she's got um, quite a shine. She's very soft and silky. If her coat was fluffier, um, a little bit out of condition, I'd be suspecting that there might be more going on like lice or mites or something. Um, in terms of that, that's the next thing that you can very quickly che check for. Um, I tend to do this work more often when I suspect there might be lice and mites. Um, Monster is clearly enjoying her health check here. Um, so you just pat the fur on the back of the bum, so I'll show you a bit, assuming she cooperates, which is always a challenge. Um, so what, all you're doing there is you're looking at the root of the hair. The reason you check the bum is if there's going to be lice, um, they're going to be in the places that the rats groom least often, and the bum is one of those places. Um, so I always check there, and you're looking for little white dots that are stuck to the hair shaft, as opposed to dandruff, which is kind of loose and flicks off or little orange rods that kind of move and the number of times I've spent sat there staring at these little orange dots wondering whether they're moving or not it shows um, but you do you do end up getting a bit of a an idea um, sorry I'm being invaded here what you the, the reason the camera is shaking is one of the rats is also climbing up the, ca the camera stand which is just a random um, pole that I've got in the room they, they quite like climbing poles so you check for lice um, nothing on them. You can also check in terms of mites, feel around the shoulder, ah, not inside the ear. Luna is very helpful today, I might get her later. Um, so mites te uh, are microscopic to a start for a starting point. You won't be able to see them. You can have a bit of a look, but you know, you, you, you won't be, all you'll be able to see with mites, uh, we now have Tato, I've swapped models, another Aguti, um, is you'll be able to see some little scabs and it's usually quite a few scabs around the shoulder that's because that's where they can scratch the most often so whilst they might be itchy all over that's the place that shows the signs and there's a different kind of mite that if you look very closely at the edge of the ear if it's um, not smooth at all so if it's kind of a little lumpy kind of serrated edge that's another kind of mite called um, sar sarcoptic mange mites so you kind of have a bit of a look for those um, I haven't got any to show you in the rats at the moment, they're doing very well. <laughs> um, so that's that's nothing that we could see. So we've had a bit of a feel over for scabs, particularly over the top of them. Um, you also want to feel over underneath them. So if you notice, I'm kind of running my hand on the inside of the legs. That's a classic um, mammary tumour place. So it's kind of instinctive. I even do it to books because books can get mammary tumours. It's also, when you're doing that, books are prone to abscesses there and there, which are uh, Prepucial gland abscesses and I'm feeling in that area as well and then I always give a quick feel under the bingo wings um, again that's another classic mammary tumour location it can hide a bit because it's more in the armpits um, so those are the kind of major lump points so we've had a good kind of look for any lumps we've got look for any 
kind of ruffles in the fur and scabs on the back. They tend to be more often be cysts or abscesses when they're um, on the back and they're more often kind of fatty lumps or tumours or sometimes abscesses when they're down there when they're underneath. Right, still monster back since she seems to be waiting patiently and Tato's lost interest. So the next thing I would check on a rat is actually by touch again, though you can back it up by a good listen to the rat's chest, but when they've got respiratory problems, you, nine times out of ten you can feel it in the chest first before you can hear it. So you'll feel this kind of slight vibration. Um, if you get used to just lightly resting your fingers onto the chest uh, regularly on your rats, you'll get used to what a normal rat feels like, the kind of breathing, the heartbeat. Um, when, when you get a respiratory problem, you will feel a grating and a vibration there. And I pick that up nine times out of ten by my hands first. And then if I listen, I can quite often hear it. Um, not every issue is equally as, as loud or obvious, but it's it's one that you, you kind of get used to listening and seeing and kind of picking up on. So that's another good test. Um, final quick test that it's worth doing. Um, ah, sorry, I have help again, um, is checking for their teeth. So let's try and get this comfortable for Monster. I would normally do this facing into me and it's a lot more dignified and comfortable. So what you're doing is you're just pulling the little lips back. Um, I will try and move a bit. And you're just checking that the teeth are, they should be orange, orange is good. And they should have a nice flat edge as they meet and should overlap a bit. They are quite long, that's fine. What you're looking for is that, keep, that flat edge and they should be nicely aligned. You don't want to see anything going like that. And trust me, I've seen teeth that do that. Um, sorry. <laughs> that would have ended up in um, a pen disaster. Um, yeah, so you want to see the teeth kind of nicely in line. Sometimes they can get a little bit splayed. Um, keep an eye on those. They should come back to normal. They sometimes splay out when they're kind of grind grinding them in a certain way. Um, and, and rats should very much keep them ground straight level themselves but it's always worth checking particularly if you notice a rat losing weight just check on the teeth um, so that's covered probably the main kind of elements of a really quick simple basic health check um, that is something you can do every day or you can make sure you put aside specific times to check on it let's say once a week um, but yeah it's it's really down to how you do it. I do the kind of touch and the feel health check all the time and then I might investigate a little bit more if something just doesn't quite seem right. Um, so the next kind of health check you do is is the kind of health check when you do think, I'm not sure, something's, something's not right, something's weird about this rat, I want to kind of find out a little bit more. Uh, let's see if I've got another volunteer since months has been good so far. Let's try a muggle mug. Um, so Let's say I noticed that um, Muggle Mog was just just not herself for, for a day. There are various things you want to do and I'm going to categorise it in different things. So look, the first thing you do when you're looking at a rat is look at their overall condition. Um, Mog's a very good example of a rat that's in really good condition at the moment. Again, you can see her shine and her coat's lying very smoothly to her body. When she's moving around, she's not hunched at all. She's got a very relaxed posture. Um, as has Tato, who has decided to join Mog and feeling a bit left out. Um, but you can just see from both these rats, they're basically glowing with health. They're in, in very good condition. So I've had my little look at the how they look. Um, I've looked at their posture. Um, if, if I saw a rat that was quite fluffed up, so I don't think I'm going to manage to make Tato look fluffed up, but kind of hunched up into themselves. So they kind of withdraw inwards and their fur just goes, uh, we call it, it's pilar erection, but fluffed up works fine for me. Um, that's a sign of a rat that's not entirely happy. Um, you can also, when you're looking at them, um, look at how their chest moves and how their um, flanks move as well. If Monster appears, oh, I have found Monster. She's actually not a bad example of this because she has just something slightly going on which is causing her to kind of move her flanks around a little bit more so we've got a monster and we've got a ellie and i don't know if you can just see on the video and um, it's not helped by the fact that ellie is not sitting very still but ellie has very little movement in her flanks 
um, whereas Monster has slightly more. Now, there's not much in it. Um, whatever's going on with Monster is not a significant thing. Um, but there is something not quite as right about her breathing as everybody else's breathing. Um, in an extreme case, what you will see is this getting fully pulled in. Um, it's what we call flank breathing, and that is um, a serious, serious problem. If you're seeing a rat flank breathing, it means they can't pull in enough into their chest um, to breathe properly. Or if they're breathing through the mouth, and you do see that, it's very much like gasping in humans. Um, again, very, very urgent symptom. That needs a vet straight away. That's not going to wait till tomorrow. Um, you can see laboured breathing as well, where they're not quite at the point of fully pulling in their flanks um, and they're not gasping, but they're clearly having a hard time of breathing. Um, that, that also needs veterinary attention, but it's not quite as um, serious as the other two. You might be able to wait till the next day. If you've got any antibiotics in, it's worth starting on that. So that's kind of the look of the breathing side of things. Um, next thing, I wonder if Ellie's... Ellie sometimes gets a sore eye, so we can look at their eyes. So if you look at the eye on this side versus the eye on that side, you can see that this side's eye is slightly smaller. And actually, if if you look close, like, and she doesn't wiggle, it's slightly pinker on the outside. Um, that's just the sign that she's she's got a constant issue where one eye on um, just flares up and gets a little bit sore, and then it'll go away again and fix. But that difference in eyes says there's something um, not particularly comfortable going on there. You'll find a rat with an eye problem will be washing it quite a lot. Um, they might be blinking a fair bit, they might be shaking the head. Um, those are things to look out for. One thing that you'll also commonly see is something called porphyrin. Now Ellie did have porphyrin about five minutes ago, but she's clearly cleaned it off and she's absolutely fine again now. Um, but that's like a dark red pigment um, that's actually in the tears. Um, that's a good example of that I've just seen. Give me 10 seconds. Sorry about that. I just spotted that um, Diddy was around. Now, Diddy's a very good example for pointing, pointing out some of the issues that you pick up in a health check. Diddy's an old lady and she's also not quite right at the moment. Um, she decided she wanted to come out of the cage of her own accord though, so um, she can join in. So if you notice with Diddy, um, first thing you would say about Diddy is you, if, if you look at her, she has a head tilt. So Diddy has had a head tilt for a long time. Um, she actually got it some years ago, it was so some months ago, sorry, it was treated and she's um, got residual scarring. But that is something to look out for in rats. If they're looking a little bit under the weather, they can be getting head tilt, which is normally an ear infection, but can be a sign of other things. Um, in terms of me, when I talked about um, a slightly fluffed up coat, if you look at Diddy, she does have that slightly at the moment. Now, some of that's her age and some of that's the fact that she's um, not quite feeling at her best at the moment. And if you notice now and again, Diddy will also kind of, she probably won't do it now, give her head a bit of a shake. Um, that's just saying, because she's old and she's got hind leg degeneration, she's not as good at cleaning out her ears, so they get a bit itchy. So she quite likes it when I itch it for her. Um, don't you miss you? So you give me licks. So another thing to point out on Diddy as an example. So if you notice around her shoulders, she has some kind of dark red pigment on her, her topaz fur. It shows up better on topazes and light coloured rats. But again, that's porphyrin. So whilst a certain amount of porphyrin is normal, it's also a sign that they're generally feeling a little bit under the weather. Um, they're not grooming as effectively as they were and they're producing a bit more porphyrin. Um, so that's kind of going on with Diddy at the moment. Um, to be honest, it's been going on for a while because she, she is an older girl and she has various little bits and pieces going on at the moment. So she's also a good example. Um, it's going to be interesting trying to get her somewhere to walk on because she's not the most stable. But if you notice her moving around, how her back legs are very floppy. Um, and if I picked up a tail, uh, it's very floppy as well. It's not kind of up to normal. She has hind leg degeneration, which is a kind of an aging thing. And it's something, it's actually very interesting looking at a rat's gait as a, a means of... Um, Kind of assessing how, how they're getting on. So watching how they move around from a very healthy kind of hop, skip, kind of run versus a kind of 
a, st a kind of waddle like we're getting from Diddy at the moment. And sometimes what you also see is a rat that's quite a young rat, clearly kind of standing up on stilts on their back legs. I don't have one I can show you at the moment, which is probably a good thing. Um, and there's kind of like a stiffness around the rear end. That's quite often a sign that there's something going on in terms of urinary tract infection, um, which is where it then becomes very, very useful if you've got any urine dipsticks actually in. In fact, I've got a pot handy. Right, so urine dipsticks. These are just for humans, multi reagent dipsticks. Um, one of the key things on there, they've got um, leukocytes, protein, blood, um, and glucose. Those are the four main ones that I use, if I'm honest. Um, they just look like... Sorry, we've got a small party. Everybody wants the dipsticks. Um, they just look like, like this. Oh, Diddy fell off. Um, and Muggle's trying to eat the tub. Um, you basically dip them through the rat's urine. You want it to want it to urinate on a clean, dry place and then have a look and you're comparing it to this bit here. That way around, sorry. And then you basically just compare the sample along and find out which, which reading it comes closest to. Generally, anything that's significantly over the normal, which the normal is um, along here, um, at least for the ones that I've mentioned, indicates there might be something going on and it's good information for your vet. They quite often use these as well and they cost like 10 quid for 100 which will last you forever. Sorry, just rescuing a diddy. She had a wonder. Um, so we've had a bit of a look overall at how they look. We've looked at how they move. Um, another key thing when there's something not right is to offer them a bit of food. Um, I'll see if Diddy fancies a treat. I'm probably going to have Diddy mobs now. Because um, everybody's starving apparently. No, nope, that's not your treat, that's Diddy's treat. Um, I'm just going to have to protect her. So. so, just removing a few rats, otherwise I can't really demonstrate you to your particular problem. Sadly, the rats are very capable of um, coming up. So, if I hand Diddy this treat, You'll notice straight away that she's not holding very well. Now this is sadly um, a classic symptom of what I suspect Diddy has going on actually, which is um, a pituitary tuber. Um, it also goes with a kind of slightly fluffed up head. Um, if you compare Muggle Mug, who's also a Dumbo, you'll see she's a lot sleeker. Um, Diddy's just not quite herself at the moment and you can see she's typically holding with one hand and very clumsy. She's hungry <laughs> for all my rats are but she actually appreciates me holding it for her um so this is a very good test when you've got a rat that just doesn't quite see themselves seems off losing a bit of coordination maybe a little bit confused um pituitary tumors are sadly quite quite common in rats um at least in older age um particularly in girls because they're hormonally driven um it, oh no <laughs> Just have to remove a muggle mod from Diddy's treat. <laughs> and Ellie's her daughter. She should not be stealing from her. It's kind of mean. Old mum, not feeling well. Eat her treats. Um, so that gives you a feeling for kind of what I'd call the grip test. You can also put them up to the bars and you'll find that um, a rat that's potentially got something going on will hold on and then kind of droop off. No, you don't, Mugs. Oh, you. <laughs> Problem with too many rats out. Um, it's quite a, cla a very good one to kind of test for. Something else to test for when a rat's in similar situations is you're looking for one-sided weakness. So I like to sit them in my hand for this and you'll feel a difference in the way they put their weight down. Um, no, let's not push Diddy off. Um, so at the moment, Diddy's actually very even, um, which is good considering she's got a head tilt. So it's, you could sometimes also look at the head and how they walk, but with Diddy being kind of residual tilt, I couldn't look at that, but I can feel how she puts weight on different sides of her body. Um, so she's very even, which means she's probably not got a stroke, which is another thing that comes up with, it's a lot more sudden. Um, Diddy's been <laughs> um, Diddy's been having a few troubles for a few weeks now, kind of showing her age a lot more at first and it's got to this stage. So that covers most of the common kind of issues that you can see visibly. Um, how much they're eating is also important, as is how much they're drinking. So if a rat suddenly goes off its food, um, you know that there's something going on. Um, 
Now that can be as simple as the teeth could be a bit sore. Um, you can get things like kidney problems that can make them feel a little bit nauseous. I mean, rats can't vomit, but it doesn't mean they don't feel sick. Um, I've seen a rat actually suffering from travel sickness once. That was fascinating. Um, they quite often try and regurgitate. Um, but if, they be if they're going a bit nauseous, um, some conditions can cause them to go off food. Rats naturally decide what's safe to eat about how it, with how it makes it feel. So it can be quite a dangerous kind of response. And your best bet when that happens is to try new foods and investigate further. Um, I'd say your end dip for that is quite often kidney involvement. Um, other things that you can look at is their droppings. So what do they look like? They can range from liquid through to quite hard. Um, anything that's not typical brown is worth at least a think about. Um, I will say that they can eat things like crayons and um, pencil crayons and that will turn the poo very interesting shades. I've been there with bright green before. Um, but they can also get issues where they kind of get blood in the faeces and that kind of thing. So anything that's abnormal is worth investigation, even though there might often be um, a safe kind of reason for it. Um, another thing to check is their urine. So are they urinating a lot? Very little. Um, very dilute urine can be a sign that they're drinking a lot and that can be a sign of their kidneys problems as well. Um, you can get sticky kind of sugary urine, which can be a sign you know, of diabetes. You can get pink urine, which can be a sign either they've eaten beetroot recently, which normally catches me out, or they've actually got blood in the urine and a urinary tract infection. Um, there is quite a few different things that you can spot from that, though needless to say, when you actually want them to pee, they don't. Um, but I will say that the dipsticks are probably the most useful tool in that, and they're very, very useful for a bit of home diagnosis. Um, if you're not sure, the rat hasn't got enough symptoms yet to go to the vets, um, but they're definitely not right. That can give you that little bit more, which means going to the vets can, rather than be, oh, just give them Batril and keep an eye on it, they can, that can actually prescribe what they need. Um, so that's gone through urination, feces, eating, I'm trying to think of what else. Noise, um, we talked a little bit about that in the kind of quick check over, health checks. And um, you can also listen, if a rat is making a noise basically full stop, there's usually something up. Other than bruxing, which is kind of grinding their teeth, the rat equivalent of purr. And actually even bruxing, if they're bruxing with a really kind of tense, fluffed up body, that is um, reassuring themselves and they're probably in pain. Um, if their eyes get very squinty, that's quite a good one to look out for. Um, regular squinty eyes says that something's hurting them as well. Um, I think they call it orbital tightening. They can pull in a little bit around the nose. There's some, I think I shared a while ago, a really good sign to check for the symptoms of um, pain in rats. So I keep hearing banging and somebody's climbing something they probably shouldn't be. Ah, not my feet. Sorry, I also have a sock muncher. Um, she's on the floor. Um, so those are probably the main things that I would say you're, you're looking for in a kind of a bit of a mini diagnostic. Um, what I've found several times, sometimes is all the signs and symptoms you're looking at pointing at something definite. Other times they're very much a kind of collection of things that you can spot but you don't know what it leads to. Um, what I would say in experience from that is um, write a list of them down, even down simple things like um, confusion is a genuine symptom um, when combined with other things and they're things that your vet won't be able to pick up on because they don't know the animal well. Um, so writing that down in a list and then taking that along with the, the rat to, to the vets can make a real difference in terms of the vet's ability to diagnose. Um, though I think mine kind of dread me coming with a list now because it's usually something very complicated and weird because most of the like minor stuff I can treat myself. This girl keeps eating my feet. Um, but yes, I will also say in terms of checkups, some people think that they should take their rats along to the vets regularly for checkups. I would say in my experience, it's probably not worth the additional stress and um, infection risk of taking them to the vets. Um, there are several things that rats can pick up at vets. Um, it's a risk anywhere you go, but things like if a dog's been recently um, vaccinated with Bordetella, um, that can be passed on to rats. If a dog actually has Bordetella, that's even more risky. Um, if any animals that have been in the surgery have um, one of the viruses like Sendai can be carried by a number of different 
um, kind of animals, small animals, like hamsters, mice and that lot, or SCAB, which is a rat only thing, but still can be a bit of a pest um, and can make the rats very, very ill. So there's risk every time you go anywhere and, and vets are places where a lot of sick animals gather. So for me, <laughs> Mog does like my head, um, ah, when somebody's back at my feet again. Um, yeah, so for me, if you're going to the vet, it has to be for a good reason. So the rat should be ill for that because you can do so much checking at home and pick up on so much um, just from what I've shown you already. Um, of course, if the rat's sick, you need to go to the vet. There's this, you can't treat everything at home. I can't treat everything at home and I've been at it for a lot of years now. Um, so I definitely do that, but I would, wouldn't really recommend going along to a vet. I think you're probably better off going along to a show. Um, and asking an experienced judge or, or owner to have a bit of a, a check over. Like I say, it's part of what I do when I judge is um, kind of feel over. Even, even now, I mean, I'm not even thinking about it and um, little fingers getting a health check automatically. Um, and it's something, it's the way I hold my rats and handle my rats a lot as well. So they get used to it, which means when they do go to the vet, other than being wiggly little pains in the backside, um, they let the vet do quite a lot to them. <laughs> Um, which is also good. So that's another good reason for actually kind of health checking them regularly, just familiarity. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the most thing. There's probably a thousand things that I could talk about on, on health. It's a massive, massive topic, um, but that covers the most things. And I probably should try and round up the girls and give them their evening meal. So um, thank you and sorry for how long this waffle's been. <laughs>